In my last video, I disassembled the Singer 99 and started to clean it up. We left off with a good coating of sewing machine oil. If you have not seen part 1, I'll put a link in the top right hand of the screen now. The sewing machine oil has been sitting on the surface of the machine for a while. I'm just removing it with a piece of old t-shirt material. The sewing machine oil will get off any remaining dirt. It's also great for giving a good shine, and you could leave it at that if you're happy with the result. I'm going to use Carnuba Car Wax to give a little added protection to the finish. I apply it with a cotton pad all over the machine, and then buff it off with a soft cloth. Remember the pieces I left to soak in isopropyl alcohol? I'm just cleaning them off with a soft brush, dipped in the alcohol, and a paper towel. Don't get isopropyl alcohol anywhere near the finish of the machine itself. The bobbin case has some corrosion still on it, so I used some fine wire wool and some autosol metal polish to clean that off. I use the cotton bud to start and then move on to the wire wool for any stubborn parts. Take your time with this. I also polish the remaining silver pieces, including the face plate, needle plate, and bobbin cover. Now to start putting everything back together. Starting with the bobbin case. Check to see if the mechanism moves as it should. If it sticks, you haven't got the case in right. 
Next I reinstall the needle plate. The bobbin cover goes on the opposite way to how you might expect. It slides from right to left under the needle bar and into the spring clip which holds it in place. Next I'm putting back the presser foot pressure screw. Reinstalling the thread cutter, be careful here these are sharp. The needle clamp. And the presser foot. Next the faceplate goes on. Then the bobbin winder thread guide. And next I'm screwing back on the belt guard and the bobbin winder assembly. I didn't take this apart as it was clean to start with and they're incredibly fiddly to put back together. I'll add a link to another video showing this procedure. Next slide the hand wheel on. Then the stop motion washer with the two inner tabs pointing out. Then screw on the stop motion knob. This can sometimes be a little bit fiddly to get on. Tighten the grub screw in the stop motion knob and check that it works. It should unscrew about a quarter of a turn and allow the hand wheel to spin freely without moving the needle bar. If it doesn't, take off the stop motion knob again and rotate the washer around 180 degrees. It only goes on one way and so you'd have a 50% chance of getting it right the first time. I got lucky. Next I'm putting back the tension assembly before taking it apart. I do this so I know which position it goes in with the line between the plus and minus to the top. If you take it apart first, it's easy to get the tension spring position wrong. Make sure when you're putting it back in that the release pin is still in place. To disassemble, push the numbered unit back while unscrewing the adjustment knob. This has a pin which engages into the dial to turn it, and unless you push in the dial, the knob will only unscrew so far. Remove the dial, then the washer with the pin, then the beehive spring, the plus minus marker, and finally the tension discs. The tension discs are pretty dirty and will need a clean and polish. I'm putting all the shiny bits in isopropyl alcohol to soak. 
while I clean the black dial with a little sewing machine oil. The isopropyl alcohol cleans any grease off the metal pieces. And a rub with some kitchen towel shows how dirty they were. Dirty tension discs can cause all sorts of tension issues, so I like to make sure that they're as clean and smooth as possible. A quick polish with autosol and fine wire wool ensures smooth discs. Next, take the two domed discs. Put the first one on the spline with the dome facing out, and the second one with the dome facing in. Then put the plus minus plate on, with the plus and minus to the top. Then the beehive spring. Make sure the tail that goes in the slot in the spline faces to the right. Next the washer with the finger to the top and pointing out and then the numbered dial. Place this with number 2 to the top. Press the dial in while you carefully screw on the nut. There's a small nub that fits into one of the holes on the numbered dial. You should be able to turn the dial around until it stops at 9. and back to zero. You can adjust the dial setting by compressing the dial and tightening or loosening the nut until you get a good tension for general sewing at around number four. Test that the tension releases when you lift the presser foot. The spool pin was missing on this machine, so I've sourced a replacement and I'm gently tapping it into place. I'm adding a spool felt. Time to put the machine back in its base. You may need an extra pair of hands here to help. I tried wedging the pins up with cocktail sticks, but it wasn't completely successful. Tighten the grub screws to hold it in place. Next I'm refitting the motor. and the light. I found that having the motor at its lowest point helps with accessing the lamp fixing screw. Alternatively fit the lamp before the motor. Next refit the belt. Loosen the motor and slide up.
Then adjust the motor down until you have just about a quarter of an inch play in the belt and tighten the motor mount up. Time for a test so. I hope you've enjoyed this video, if you have please give it a like, and if you haven't already done so, please subscribe and click on the bell icon so you won't miss any of my future uploads. Thanks for watching.